Hey guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. In this video, we're going to be talking about another one of those forgotten components in your 80s or 90s General Motors car or truck. And that is this little guy right here, the thermal vacuum switch. So if you want to take a couple of minutes and learn a little bit too much about one of those components that helps run your car, then stay tuned. We'll jump in and get started. So let's start by explaining a little bit of the history of what these devices are and then I'll kind of get into what they do. So back in the late 1960s when the car companies started rolling out um, some of these emissions control components, the overwhelming majority of them were controlled by engine vacuum. Uh, at the time they just didn't have the technology to do it uh, electronically with solenoids and this is because most of these components or systems were dependent on the operating temperature of the engine. So they needed a device that would allow vacuum to travel to a certain system or component like an EFE valve or a canister purge valve uh, when the engine was operating at a certain temperature, either cold and then shut off the vacuum when the engine gets hot or the opposite. Uh, leave the valve closed until the engine reaches a certain operating temperature and then open it and allow vacuum to travel to that component to activate it. So they needed a way to do this that wasn't dependent on uh, a computer which they didn't have or an electronically controlled solenoid which at the time really uh, there was really no way to energize the solenoid at a certain point in the engine's temperature cycle. So what they came up was, was this, this guy, the thermal vacuum sensor. Now what the thermal vacuum sensor is, is it's a simple device, very similar to a tube. Uh, inside that tube, there is a piston. Uh, this screws into a uh, part of the car where the bottom can be exposed to coolant. The bottom is copper, so it conducts heat very easily. Um, when the uh, coolant gets hot, it heats up the copper, and then inside there is a wax pellet or powder, almost exactly like what you would find in your engine's uh, thermostat. Now when this wax heats up, it expands, and it pushes the piston up, either closing or opening uh, the valve inside, exposing vacuum to a port or closing off a port. That's it. It's a very simple device that can be used to either send vacuum to a component to activate it when the engine reaches a certain temperature or cut off the vacuum to a component when the engine starts to get warm, activating it or deactivating it. So what happened to thermal vacuum ports and why will you no longer find them on a modern car or truck? Well, let's talk about that next. In 1981, General Motors introduced the computer command control system to all of its passenger cars and light trucks. This system introduced an electronic brain and electronic controllers on some of these components. However, the system wasn't as advanced as they would have liked it to have been. It was very good, but it had a limit to the number of components that it could control. So well into the 1980s, GM was using the computer command control system in combination with a couple of thermal vacuum switches on some components to make sure that everything turned off or on at the right time. But as the years went by and the system got more advanced, car make manufacturers discovered that they could simply place a solenoid on a component with an electronic motor or some kind of cutoff for the vacuum system and introduce vacuum that way having the electronic brain, if you will, of the computer monitor the engine temperature or other running conditions and then activate or deactivate the solenoid or component uh, by itself. So these were no longer necessary and towards the end of carbureted vehicles uh, and especially into the early 1990s, these were phased out. That's why they're getting harder and harder to find. Now, why don't we take a walk over to my 1987 Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, which has a 307 cubic inch motor with a Rochester Quadrajet on there, 
and take a look at the thermal vacuum switches that are left on this system. Okay, so here we are. And as I look down at the emissions label, I could see that I have two components that are still controlled by thermal vacuum switches. And that is the early fuel evaporative system and the canister purge for the vapors that are captured after they come out of the fuel tank. So, as you can see, even though this vehicle is from 1987, uh, GM still used a couple of thermal vacuum switches inside the vacuum system of the car. If you'd like to learn more about that, you could check out a link up top to another video I did concerning vacuum control components. But, having said that, if you're restoring these cars, reviving one, putting one back on the road, or just using one as a driver that you've had for a while, this is something you need to be mindful of, and it's something you probably should check. These thermal vacuum switches last a very long time, but they are now 30 or 40 years old. So I'm sure for some of you out there, a few of them have failed. Now, the easiest way to figure out whether one of your switches is working or has failed is to first determine which component it controls, and then second, ask, is this a component that should be activated when the engine is hot or the engine is cold? For instance, our EFE system, which contains a thermal vacuum switch on the driver's side of the car, should only be activated when it is cold. Whereas our canister purge valve, which is located on the passenger side of the car, needs to be activated when the engine is warm. So, say I was to want to diagnose the switch on the EFE system. Determine that it needs to be running when the system is cold. So next I would have to determine uh, where's the vacuum coming from? Is it entering at the top port or the bottom port? And to basically do that, I would just start the car, disconnect each hose, determine which one has vacuum. That's the one that's supplying vacuum to your switch. And then when the switch activates, it should supply vacuum to the component. In the case of the EFE system, the switch would be activated upon starting the car because the engine is cold. So next, I would disconnect the other hose, simply determine, is there vacuum coming out of that port? In the case of the EFE system, vacuum is supplied to the switch from the bottom port. When the switch is open, it will then supply vacuum to the top port. If I'm not getting vacuum at the top port, I know that my thermal vacuum switch has seized or has failed in some way and I need to replace it. You can still find these. Most auto parts stores no longer carry them. They may be a special order item, but I've had a lot of good luck with eBay. So I would determine which part number I needed and simply take a look there. Thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it and I hope you were able to learn something about another one of these forgotten components that help make your 80s or early 90s General Motors car or truck run right. Uh, if you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Got a whole bunch of good content coming down the pipeline soon. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one.